Uh, I'm so moved by all of the speakers today. Oh my gosh. Oh. Um, so I was recently at the post office and I was online. I had to ship a box. And I never go to the post office anymore. I don't need to. Um, I haven't been there in about six years. And that's just one of the perks of being married to a mailman. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> And so I'm online with this box, and I noticed that as I'm approaching the clerk, he seems very unhappy. So as I get to him, I put my box down, and before I can say anything, he says, very annoyed, there's no address on this box. And I said, right, um, I, I, I want to mail it. I need your help with, I don't know what slip to fill out. I wasn't really sure. You know, I was hoping you could help me with that today. And even more annoyed, he said, well, there's no address on the box. What do you want me to do? And I was so taken back by his tone. I, I was seriously just in shock. And I said, sir, I would like you to help me. Uh, OK, I need to put the address on the box. I will do that. But is there a slip that I need to fill out as well? I didn't even tell you where I was mailing it. And really angry, he said, he just kind of waved me away with his hand. He said, go, go over there, go over there and put the address on the box. And I walked away and I was in shock and I mumbled something nasty, um, couldn't help myself. And, uh, and I walk away and I just stood there and I couldn't stand, I couldn't write anything. I just stood there and thought, I can leave. I can leave right now. I don't, I don't have to tolerate this, um, you know. I don't know why he's talking to me that way, but like I don't need to do this. Mike, my husband, can just mail this for me tomorrow. I don't need to deal with this right now. And as I'm standing there contemplating whether or not I should leave, I hear this clerk tell his coworker that he is not well and he needs to go home. So of course, the compassionate part of me, just my, that voice was like, Kim, you know, come on, have some compassion. Don't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. He's having a bad day. We all have bad days, blah, blah, blah. I was still really livid, though. Like, my blood was boiling. So I decided to stay. I got back in the line, kind of secretly hoping I would get another clerk. And he sees me, and he waves me over. And I was like, oh, boy. And the first thing he did was apologize, which made me feel good. And then he kind of went on to vent to me about how unhappy he was at work. So I left. And this man really sparked something in me. I, just kept thinking, gosh, no one should be that unhappy at a place where they spend most of their time, hours, hours of their day, more so even than with family. So then I left, and I'm thinking this over and over, and the universe just kind of all of a sudden, I saw unhappy people everywhere. It was like the universe was putting them all on my path for a reason. Like it was definitely trying to tell me something. Uh, I came home, um, and this is in the course of about a week or so. My landlord, a liquor store owner, had come downstairs and started to vent to me about how miserable he is at work that he can barely make it five years to retirement. My sister, who is a high school math teacher, cried to me about what a rough year she had with her students this year, that she was just completely drained of all of her energy. She barely had any to give to her own children. My husband, Mike, the mailman, came home and was complaining to me about how micromanaged and unappreciated he felt. That week, I had dinner with a friend who's a TV producer, someone extremely burnt out. She hasn't taken vacation in two years to, due to the fear of falling behind. Um, a, co a colleague, of, a coworker of mine, an accountant, uh, you know, pulled me into the kitchen to tell me that she felt like she was walking on eggshells, that she couldn't do anything right. She just felt like only her mistakes were noticed. And then there's me, an entrepreneur, who puts the needs of others before her own. That clerk came into my life for a reason. He made me, or he helped me, take a deeper look at my own happiness. And I just couldn't help but wonder, what would our lives be like if we made happiness our first priority? So I just want you to take a moment and just really think about that. How would making happiness your first priority, how would that feel and look like and be in your life? 
I thought a lot about this, and this is what I envisioned. We would hang out with people who made us feel good, who gave us a lot of love. We would not waste our time with anyone who didn't have our best interest at heart. Some of us would travel more. I know personally I would love to take three to five big trips a year. We would either spend more time with family or less time with family, dependent on how we felt around them. We would work on our relationship with money, reducing stress in whatever areas that it might be you know, causing. Um, you know, so maybe some of us would invest our money in causes that made us feel good and that we believed in, but maybe some of us would work with a financial planner to reduce our debt. We would take control of our health, and this looks different for everybody. So maybe for some people it's eating healthier and exercising more, but for others maybe it's taking a key gong class, or maybe it's going hiking more often with your friends. Whatever it is for you to make you feel good in your body. Some of us would figure out ways to work less, take on a hobby, uh, you know, have more flexibility and freedom in our lives. Maybe some of us would quit our jobs and open up our own businesses. So three years ago, I took my own advice. I wanted to do something really important with my life. I was kind of done pushing paper. I really wanted to have a positive impact on the world. So I decided to quit my job, um, well, go part-time, actually, and open up a business teaching young girls how to love themselves, how to take care of themselves. I knew self-care was super important. So I wanted to teach young girls how to do this. So here I am, I'm building this business, I'm loving every moment of it, I'm my own boss, I have all this time, all this freedom, I'm, all this flexibility, I'm making my own schedule. Happiness was my work. But the first two years, I noticed that I put my work schedule before my self-care schedule. And I would squeeze in five minutes of it here and there, I would, you know, eat a healthy salad, I would go to the gym and take a class. I would even say loving things to myself in the mirror. I know earlier someone mentioned um, mirror work, which is so important. But that's kind of all I did, and I would consistently bl uh, blame my lack of time why I couldn't do more. And what's interesting is that the mission of my company was teaching self-care. And you know that saying, uh, you teach what you're meant to learn the most. Well, I was certainly the epitome of that saying. I knew that the only way to run my company was authentically, and I was struggling big time. It was that little voice in my head, like that little devil on my shoulder that was always like, ah, 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 you want to meditate? You have to get out that big proposal today. So which is it going to be, one or the other? Or you want to go for a walk to clear your head? Do you know how much you have to do today? Like, no. <laughs> and my friend Steve actually calls it the big mouth in my head. And when I listen to that big mouth, I'm not valuing, the, I'm not honoring the valued parts of me. I'm not replenishing my soul. I'm not recharging my inner battery. That voice can be just so freaking heartless sometimes. So all around, I felt completely burnt out and resentful that all of my time, energy, and money were leaving me. My priority needed to be me, not my business. I needed to take care and love me. And if I wasn't going to do that, then my company was never going to be successful, and most of all, I was never going to be happy. So by a show of hands, how many of you relate to what I'm saying? That's what I thought. I am not alone. So I'd like to share three things that I did that helped me make my happiness a priority. One, I declared out loud to myself that I was going to put my self-care first no matter what. It was going to come first. I made that decision. We completely underestimate making a decision and the impact that has on us. Number two, I sat down and I made a long list of every single thing in life that made me feel good. Everything from taking walks on the beach, to hugging my husband, to feeding the ducks in my backyard. And number three, I penciled some of those, in on, th those things in on my calendar. 
uh, when I was going to exercise, meal prep, I made appointments with my holistic doctor, I made dinner plans with my friends, play dates with my niece and nephew, listening to music at Jones Beach with my husband, organizing my office, cleaning out my pantry. Yes, those things make me feel good. I love purging. And this next one I'll share with you just because I'm being real here. I made monthly colonic appointments, not for everyone, and that's okay. But you know, we all detox in our own ways. But little by little, I was making happiness my priority. And that felt really good because I was taking my power back. And here's what happened when I made self-care my priority. I had crazy energy. I had so much clarity. I slept like a baby. I ate so much healthier. I exercised more and I felt so strong. My psoriasis cleared up. And the biggest thing I noticed was that I handled stress better. Like all of a sudden my anxiety, which I get a lot of, just was completely reduced and I'm sure everyone can use that. I was just amazed overall how in control and powerful I felt. It was awesome, I felt happy. And you know, practicing self-care has been proven to reduce stress, which is why it's so instrumental to healing. It actually strengthens our immune system. It awakens happiness inside of us. It reduces our self-esteem, and it motivates us. And don't get me wrong, self-care is not always about being happy. It's, it's about being gentle with yourself. It's about not getting overwhelmed when things don't go as you expect, like true calm in the face of adversity. And it's knowing that you are not alone, and it's asking for help. So doing things that make us feel good seems easy. But try telling a working mother of two to, do, to take the time to do what makes her feel good, and you will most likely get a roll of the eyes. Uh, my sister is a great example of this. She is constantly living in the overwhelm between a full-time job and two young children. Talk about uh, recharging your battery. She needs more than anything to just take the time to herself to do what feels good. Um, but each day, that feels really difficult for her. And I actually really relate to this time issue. I'm not a mom, but having worked in my entire career in the television and film industry, the only time to go to the gym is either at 5 a.m. or 10 p.m. So, like, I just, I get that. But what I've learned about self-care is it could be as small as just spending five extra minutes in the shower letting the hot water run down your back. And for a, a, a parent, it could be taking your child for a walk around the block and taking in nature. And for a working businessman who's commuting into the city on their Long Island Railroad, maybe it's listening to some uplifting music. But it's in those small but powerful moments that you are taking care of you and taking action for happiness in five minutes or less. So I have a question for you guys. If you had five quiet minutes, what would you do? Just take a moment and think about, oh, we, we a volunteer, yes, what would you do? You'd read a piece of a, a part of a book, that's awesome, love it. Um, well, this is what I would love for you guys to all do. Um, you don't have to have the answer of what you would do with that five minutes right now, but I would love for all of you to please take out your phones, go ahead, <laughs> and try not to Get caught up in the texts and the emails. I would like you to go pull up your calendar app right now. Cynthia, pull out your, yeah. Working mother of two in the back. Um, please pull up your calendar app. And what I would like for you to do, we're going to schedule these five minutes on Monday. You have two and a half days to plan what you're going to do for five minutes. So everyone got it open? Okay, you don't even have to know what you're gonna do right now. You can just write self-care time, maybe from 11 to 11.05 or three to 3.05, whichever you like. But go ahead and just write self-care time, schedule it right now. And because I'm trying to save time, later when you're not here, please put a reminder in your phone as well. The day before and 15 minutes before. So just kind of look up when you're done doing that. Harris, you're not doing it. <laughs> She's my friend. <laughs> so, okay, so now that all of you have put this five minutes in your phone, or maybe you'll do it later, that's okay. 
Um, first of all, does anybody have any I more ideas of what they will do with this five minutes that you'd like to share? Yes. Meditate. I'll share mine um, on Monday. I will put it in my phone as soon as I leave here. I, I promise you that. I am going to take that five minutes. I'm going to get pull away from my desk, and I'm going to give a nice stretch, and I'm going to go make some tea. That's what I'm going to do. So think about what you would do with 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Just kind of get your mind going. So now what I would love is for you to keep your phones out and go to your notes. Does everyone have a note section in their phone, or would you like a piece of paper? Because I have it up here. Everyone has a note section? OK. So pull up your note section, and for the next minute, I wanted to give this a couple minutes, but just to save time, I'm going to just do it for one minute. I want you to write down a list. It's a self-care list. Everything that makes you feel good to do that is helping you take care of you, I want you to write as much stuff as you can down. Go. Okay, I'm going to keep talking because I'm going to wrap this up. I just wanted to give you a chance. It's okay that you started it. You can totally finish it later. Um, never finish it. Just keep adding to it over time. So now we have next week on Monday, we have this five minutes scheduled, right? You're going to take five minutes to yourself. That feels good. You're going to do it on Wednesday as well. And for those of you feeling really overambitious, I want you to schedule it for the following Monday as well. Go crazy. So I'm going to hold up my email address right now. And if you guys want to take a picture or write it down, I want to hold you accountable. I want to hear how your Monday went focusing on you for five minutes. I want to be inspired by you. Please email me and tell me how it went. I cannot wait to hear. I am so excited, truly. Oh, yes, it's Kim at the love group dot org. Okay. So, you know, once we decide to be happier, no matter what our circumstances, we're actually taking our power back. We're making a decision. And that just makes our soul feel so freaking good, <laughs> right? Because there's nothing better than feeling empowered and loving ourselves. When we're not feeling empowered, happiness. We can't be happy because the one can't exist without the other. So I cannot wait to see what Monday holds for all of you guys. I just can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.